welcome to Kyle's Kitchen. Today we are going to be making pho. Uh, that's Vietnamese beef noodle soup. For those of you that uh, might be calling it pho, it's actually pho. You have to pronounce it like that or else you're just not in the know. Uh, today we're going to make a, a massive stock. Uh, it is uh, 16 liters, so about 4 gallons for you south of the border or not living in the 20th century. Uh, we are going to make uh, the stock with uh, beef bones, a combination of beef bones and knuckle, as well as oxtail. So there's a few key ingredients you need, but uh, there is generally a lot of flexibility. Although if you're looking for an authentic Vietnamese flavor, then uh, the one we're making today is, is the one that you should follow. Uh, the quantities are a little large. I realize that most of you probably don't want to be making four gallons of pho, uh, or beef stock in this case, uh, because this happens in two phases. The first phase is creating the stock, and the second phase is actually preparing pho, uh, which is the presentation and, and delivery to those people eating it. So, um, yeah, if you want to cut the recipe down a little bit, feel free to do so. I'll, I'll list the proportions and what ingredients are included so far. So, first step is to get a big stock pot uh, so that we can clean off the bones. Um, I like to just boil the bones for about 5 or 10 minutes and that takes off a lot of the service proteins, blood, and some gunk that would otherwise cloud the stock. It's an extra step, but if you do it, you'll end up with a nice clear broth. Um, speaking of the term broth, pho is a little bit unique. Um, when we think about soups and stocks and broths and that sort of thing, um, there's really two classifications. There's a stock and there's a broth. Uh, stock is generally a soup base made from bones, boiled for a long time so that the flavor and, and uh, fat and gelatin and a, a number of unique compounds are extracted to make uh, a thick and, and uh, a meaty mouthfeel uh, in the liquid. A broth, however, is usually the boiled meat, so the meat is boiled for a long time to get the, the actual meat flavor. Um, pho is a combination of both, so I'll accept you calling it a brock or a stoth. It's up to you. Alright, and on to the ingredients. So for this one, I am using 10 pounds of... Uh, beef knuckle. Now I've tried to choose a combination of bones that don't have a huge amount of marrow otherwise you'll end up with uh, an overly fatty broth. Uh, if you like that, great. Uh, otherwise, yeah, stick with uh, maybe 30% of your bones heavily marrowed. Um, otherwise, you know, grab uh, other parts of the leg bone, the actual knuckle bit. Uh, any beef bones are fine really. And here we have oxtail. So for this, uh, I've grabbed uh, ar around two pounds of oxtail, and this here is uh, some some pork that the butcher decided to throw in for free. So I'm going to throw that in there. Admit that if you really want to be authentic. The next thing you'll need is uh, onions, garlic. Uh, if you really want to be authentic, shallots are the way to go, but white onions will work, or any onions for that matter. Uh, we got a hand of ginger. This isn't the full hand, but we'll call this one big finger, maybe two fingers. It's a good sized chunk anyway. Uh, and for actually making the pho, this is uh, not going to be involved in the stock or broth making, if you will, but uh, uh, you will need something like this kind of piece, uh, piece of meat. This is a, uh, a peeled sirloin tip. It's a beautiful piece of meat uh, to slice into our pho. And the critical thing, this is the flavor. This is where we really get pho from. This is a mixture of, uh, uh, of spices. There's usually five or, or maybe even six spices. Sometimes as little as four, depending on who's making it. I tend to make mine with a five spice mixture. This, this uh, came in a package. It was labeled as a Chinese five spice soup. So this is not necessarily a pho blend but uh, includes most of the ingredients. Now, curiously, there's only four ingredients in here, uh, so I'm not sure why they're calling this a five spice blend. But anyway, you have what they've labeled as cinnamon, but it's not, actually. Um, if you're getting cinnamon from Asia or, or any Asian markets, generally it's going to be this. Uh, this is actually cassia, which is similar to cinnamon, but it does have a unique flavor, and it, it is, uh, uh, there is a, a marked difference in the resultant soup if you uh, use like a what we in North America would call cinnamon. If you're buying your mix from an Asian market, chances are you're getting this, which is actually a good thing. Uh, and then it comes with cardamom pods, uh, star anise, uh, and then some cloves. 
uh, a traditional fuzz would also tend to include some coriander seeds. Now, this amount that I got in one package is good enough to make uh, approximately two gallons. Uh, since we're making 16 liters or about four gallons here, I've also included a ready-made packet. Now, all of this is the same spices, but ground up fine, and they're placed in a convenient little bag that you can throw in there. Now, this actually results in a really good fa assuming it's not that old because ground spices lose their flavor and potency over time so if uh, you're shopping at an Asian market that has a fairly high turnover you've, you've probably got some fresh ground spices in there or, or ones that are close enough to it. I'm gonna do um, the actual whole the whole spices uh, in addition to the powder spice and really get a really good cross mix of flavors. These whole spices also came with this uh, cotton papery kind of bag to throw it all in so it's easy to extract later. So the first step, uh, as I said, for for me, uh, I'm using a 16 liters of a stock pot. You probably don't want that much, but that's what that looks like. That is on the heat, getting that to boil. It's going to take some time. And here we've got just a stock pot with water that I'm going to uh, parboil the stock bones, and that's just to clean and get rid of the excess proteins that uh, are generally present on them. So I will let that come to a boil. I come back to you with uh, step two. All right, so throw a little bit of beef in the boiling water, clean it up. Okay, so here we are on to the critical next phase. This is what puts the the faux in fa, if you will. Um, there's a number of uh, theories on the etymology of the word fa, and uh, one of which uh, comes from uh, the times of French colonization, and it's the theory I prefer. Um, Pot of faux is a French dish. It literally translates means uh, pot of fire. It's a stock made with a, a number of uh, uh, vegetable ingredients like carrot, onion, uh, celery, etc. But it's all uh, uh, grilled and charred, uh, which gives the uh, stock a, a sweet caramelization and a little bit more of a deep, rich brown color. So uh, when making pho, we do the same thing. This is a very critical step that gives you a very pho flavor, if you will. Uh, so anyway, I like that theory too. as to the origin. And uh, uh, that's what we're going to go with, because that's what we're doing now. So we're taking the onions, and we are simply just going to quarter them uh, like that. Now, some people like to uh, just hold the onion and uh, over the over an open flame. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, uh, especially if you're making a, a lot like I do. That that comes a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is just quarter it, and then I am going to. Uh, yeah. Throw it under the broiler. So I've got my broiler is, is ready to go. It's all heated and uh, hot. And uh, once we get the veggies prepped, like I say, for the onions, I'm just going to quarter them. For the shallots, I'm going to uh, peel and then just smash them so that they're somewhat exposed. And that will also help with flavor penetration in the soup, or extraction, I should say. And uh, the garlic, same thing. Just going to peel the skin off the clothes and then smash them lightly so that they are uh, prime for extraction, and we're just going to sit them on a grilling sheet with a light. So, what you want? 12 minutes, 10 minutes on there. We don't want to cook the uh, beef bones for too much longer than 10 minutes because we don't want to, you know, cook them and lose any of the flavor. Really, we just been doing that to to clean. So, anyway. actually a traditional ingredient in pho, but uh, it's an uh, ingredient in everything in my house that I cook. So uh, I'm going to include it. I didn't mention the other ingredients that will be required actually. Uh, that's fish sauce, uh, some of the traditional rock sugar, like the, the raw cane sugar is nice, uh, but you can use white sugar. And uh, salt, and I use kosher salt, but uh, uh, you know you can use a regular table salt if that's all you have. But I would probably cut the, the amounts in half. That is, if I give you any amounts for the salt, because it's largely based on your preference and your taste and, and how much salt you like. All right. So for the uh, ginger, don't worry about peeling it. We're just gonna use it whole, basically. You just slice it into. Uh, plants, I guess you'd say, like that, just so that there's some good surface uh, when we're char grilling that all up. Okay. Get rid of the excess peel there. Cut off those ends. 
shallots are a traditional flavor in pho. And you get them in North America, you get a lot of pho made with yellow and white onions in it. It really does something for the flavor if you use shallots. So try to do that if you can. In fact, just shallots uh, on their own with no white onions is probably best, but just due to the volume here, I'm uh, going to use a mix of onions. been in there for <clears throat> 10 minutes so we are going to just take those out and you can see they're they're nice and clean oh don't drop it like that it's very hot not good for the camera all right we're just going to put those right into the water here and right, they're cleaned up see that stuff right there is the blood protein and that is what makes for the, the bad broth i don't know if you can see that i don't know if i was filming that it's a little bit hot here but anyway it's uh, well coagulated of course and it's you can see all the scum here on the side. Lots of lots of crud in there. So doing this does really help to make a nice broth. So drop that into our heating water here. There's actually not uh, out of boil yet. Oh, oh, that's a lot of water on the lens. Okay, I'm gonna put down the camera and uh, do this. I think you get it. All right, we got our beef moved over and cleaned, and now we're gonna take our vegetables while that is happening. We'll have my trusty assistant open the door here. Hey, open. Okay. All right, we're gonna throw those under the broil to char them up. And this is not a very good broiler, but uh, it'll get them charred. All right, so we have put the majority of beef in there. You can see them. That's 16 liters of lovely less. This uh, pot is actually uh, a turkey fryer pot and also a uh, uh, crab boil or, or you know those type of things. So it's got the insert that allows you to just quickly pull everything out of there which is very convenient. As you can see though it is very high. It just fits under the microwave there which is a, a tight squeeze but uh, that's how you make 16 liters of it. So I am going to take this beef, the oxtail and also the pork in there and I'm going to put it in the boiling water as well. Now, if you look at the boiling water now, the, the amount of scum that's in there and crud in the water is uh, pretty significant. So you get a good idea of how, uh, how this will affect your, uh, your broth making uh, if you do this extra step to, to clean the meat. Now, for the actual oxtail, probably not uh, a requirement to do this uh, because it's fairly clean and it's meant for consumption anyway. They're not just bones with bone particles uh, from, from being cut uh, on the bandsaw. Well, these were cut on the bandsaw, but they were prepped for eating, so they're not quite as uh, uh, dirty. But uh, So I'm just going to boil these for, oh, I don't know, five minutes maybe. Don't want to get the, the meat too... Uh, too cooked and extract uh, too much of the, the flavor out of it because that is uh, where a good portion of the flavor for our stock comes from. All right, let's take a look here at our vegetables. And they are charring up pretty good. We're gonna give them a little more. We'll give them a little bit of a turn and we will continue to char a bit. All right, this. Oh, this smells fantastic, but oh, onion bits and garlic. And, and uh, ginger, really cooking up good. So any already charred stuff, I'm just gonna turn over. And you gotta be careful with the garlic bits. You can move them over to the side, because usually it's just directly under the broiler that's very effective. So if it's already burnt too much, just move it uh, elsewhere. Pan's warping quite a bit, but uh, we'll give that another uh, five or 10 minutes. All right, and on to our final step of preparing the stock. So you can see we have our charred vegetables here. Now these are a little black. Uh, you really just want them kind of toasted, so toss them around quite a bit. I got uh, a little bit sidetracked here, forgot about these, but uh, I'm still going to use it. There's still going to be lots of uh, good flavor and uh, color to come under there. Uh, but yeah, like keep it to a, a golden brown. 
on your charring for better flavor. All right, so we are going to simply add these to the broth <clears throat> along with our flavor bag. So you can see our meat is in there. It's still not out of boil yet. It takes a while for this water, this big of a tub to come up to boil. But uh, we've got our whole herb sachet. Uh, and to that I've added some, uh, um, some whole coriander. And then our ground herb sachet. So we just toss those in there. They are kind of paper, cottony type of thing and will eventually sink. Uh, and they should be good for eight hours. We are going to do this uh, brock, if you will, for eight hours. And it's 12.47. That means about 8.47. So 9 o'clock at night, we will be good to go. We won't be eating this until tomorrow, fortunately. Um, so, you know, spend the time if you can. The longer the better. Some people uh, say that, uh, you know, there's no sense in uh, doing a broth for much more than three or four hours, and those people are wrong. Uh, in terms of a broth, well, okay, maybe they were right for terms of a broth, but in terms of a stock where you want to extract all of that gelatiny goodness, you want to go a while. Eight hours seems to be the magic number. And you can tell that by looking at the bones after the eight hours that uh, it's all of the uh, good stuff has been extracted from them and they will be really bitter. Um, for these beef bones, you can't really tell by snapping them because the bones are very thick and they won't snap no matter how long you boil them. But uh, for a chicken or a turkey broth, you know you've extracted all the good stuff when you can just easily pick up the bones and uh, snap them, all of the gelatin and making them elastic and pliable has been cooked out and is now in your stock, which is exactly what you want. So, as long as you can, try to hit eight hours if possible. And one thing I forgot to mention is the use of salt. You should add your uh, salt, and I'm adding here half a cup of uh, kosher salt to this mix. You should add it uh, uh, prior to finishing because uh, salt does help to break down cell walls and extract uh, all of those good flavors and essences from your ingredients. Uh, I'm also going to put in uh, maybe a cup of, of fish sauce at this point as well. Um, we will add more salt and, and flavorings and seasonings uh, towards the end just to get another depth of flavor. But yeah, do add your salt uh, in the initial boil. All right, once your salt is added, throw your lid back on, and then I am going to set my timer for 30 minutes. And every 30 minutes I'm going to come back and skim the protein scum that forms along the top, and that will help make your broth nice and clear. All right, so we started this at 12.47. It's now 2.30, so we're about an hour and three quarters into it. And let's take a look here. And we're starting to get a decent color on it. It's starting to make the whole house just smell lovely. So what I've done here is uh, picked up the handle of my internal uh, colander, I guess you will, and just picked it up and pushed it back down, and that's just pushing the liquid through the meat that's all at the bottom there and just distributing the flavors. So lots of time to go on this, but I have been coming around and skimming it. And I'll show you the tool I use for that. It is a fine mesh strainer. Uh, very, very fine mesh. If you don't have one of these, you know, you can use the old ladle and that sort of thing, but you just basically skim it around and it pulls off. Uh, you don't want that out. But any uh, errant proteins laying on the surface, it'll pull out. This, because we actually boiled the meat prior to putting in, is fairly clean. I haven't had to do much, uh, much work to clean it all. You can see here on the inside, there's a slight bit of scum and stuff, but uh, overall this broth is, is quite nice. One other thing I want to mention is, you see it's just minimally bubbling there, and that's what you want. You don't want a rolling boil because that will destroy and damage everything in there and, and just cause off flavors. If you just simmer it slowly, like this, let the water, heated water, act as a solvent and do its thing, uh, leaching the flavors out of all of those components. You definitely do not want this rolling boil. Alright, so we are at the eighth hour here. Now before I do any seasonings, although I've added some intermittent salt throughout the way, now I'm doing this with a quarter cup measure. 
um, but I've got 16 liters of, uh, of liquid here. If you're doing a smaller batch, you may want to do it by the tablespoon and just taste it as you go and be diligent in doing that because uh, you don't want to wreck a whole batch of after, especially after you spent eight hours preparing. So we're going to pick up all of the work and innards here. That's really hot. in here but we'll let that drain in this bucket and then in a few minutes I'll take uh, some of the remaining uh, liquid that's in the bottom there because there's lots of goodness. For example there's the uh, uh, spice sachet is still in there and there's lots of liquid draining out of there so lots of flavor and all of this meat in here if you're if you're uh, willing to separate it is uh, is worth eating it's like uh, slow braised beef so all the oxtail for example is really delicious you can pull that out Season it up a bit, a little bit of hoisin sauce, fantastic. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to put the stock back on the burner and uh, just make my additions of sugar, uh, salt, and uh, fish sauce or nuk mum in Vietnamese. And this is the traditional Asian rock salt that I'm, or rock sugar, I should say, just a, a natural sugar that we're using. You can go ahead and just put this whole thing in there and let it dissolve, or you can grate it into there, or just use your normal white sugar. But uh, season it to taste using the fish sauce, salt, and uh, sugar, and you should be good to go. And we'll come back with you in phase two where we actually prepare the pho uh, tomorrow. And we're going to let this cool and freeze some of it for future use. All right, we are on to phase two of our pho. So we are now at our friend's lovely new kitchen here, and we are going to actually do the preparation and presentation of the pho. So we have transported our well, approximately two gallons, we'll say, of our broth or stock, whatever you like to call it. And we're gonna heat that up, and then we are going to prepare it. So we are gonna be actually building it with all of these ingredients here. Uh, most critical is probably the beef, as you see here. <clears throat> uh, and this also has some beef balls. Um, if you were to order this combination in the restaurant, you would call this uh, pho thai boving, meaning it is pho with steak and beef balls. So this is the boving beef balls here. And we've got another peeled tip similar to what we had yesterday. And uh, we're just going to cut that against the grain in fine slices while we prepare the sauce. You'll see that in a moment. And we have a selection of herbs here. Onion, uh, some spring onions, uh, bean sprouts, and some lemons are going to form the garnish on top. And for flavoring, we have a number of, of herbs here. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with uh, Thai basil or Rao Wei in Vietnamese. Uh, Probably none of you are familiar with this one. This is what we call in English rice paddy herb or ngo am in Vietnamese. And we have this one in English we call a sawtooth herb uh, or ngo gai in Vietnamese. And to top it we have uh, hoisin sauce, a versatile kitchen favorite, and uh, our red rooster sauce, sriracha, which is a, a Vietnamese hot sauce staple and being copied and imitated everywhere. Here we are doing prep on some of the onion. You want to cut this thin across the grain. Thinner is better because of that it cooks by the heat of the soup. And uh, you'll get that nice uh, sweet onion flavor as opposed to a harsh flavor. And for the spring onions, we have gone ahead and uh, chopped the majority of the onion. And you can see this is how much we have left. We'll be doing something different with that. So uh, cut your onions in the same fashion. And then the green parts you can just chop up for garnish addition to the soup. All right, so we have got everything ready to go now. So this is the final assembly on our pho. As you can see here, we've got uh, our bean sprouts and herbs washed and dried. You can spin them in a salad spinner makes that easy. And we've got some of the noodles uh, portioned out in a bowl. So what we're using today is uh, what we call a fresh noodle, as opposed to the dry packets. This is a uh, uh, a fresh noodle. It's, it's somewhat dry, but it's uh, flexible and only requires a minute's dip in the hot water. So, we have uh, a pot of hot water boiling, boiling salted water here that uh, soon is going to lovingly demonstrate the noodles. 
And so she's going to just dunk those noodles in. Just wet those noodles and then we'll go ahead and assemble the actual soup. If you want more noodles, put more noodles. If you're eating light, low carb, then put less. And so you want to just slice your meat in very, very thin, thin slices. Uh, the whole point here is to have the actual heat of the uh, soup uh, cooking the beef. So we're not actually doing any cooking of the beef other than putting it in the soup and letting it cook itself. So once you've got a nice thick slice on there, we're just going to layer it in here, right on the noodles. And now we've cut up our garnish of onions. So we've got some of the regular onions mixed with green onions. A lot of people like to mix cilantro in there too. That's a style of the north. You can do that if you like. Um, I prefer without. So we've got our noodles, we've got our beef layered on, and our onion. We're going to now go over to the stock. Uh, in here we've got our beef balls. Uh, they've just been cooking and simmering in here, so some of the flavors worked into the broth. If you're, you know, not putting beef balls, that'll make this step. So I'm just going to put some of those on there. And then I'm going to take the soup and just ladle it right over the beef. And the, this is hot. It's not quite at the boil, but uh, it has been for, uh, it had been to a boil, and it's now just kind of sitting over a low flame to keep the heat. And that is more than enough heat to cook the beef. It's about 200 degrees and you need about 140 degrees to cook that. Beef. So, just like that, let that circulate. And then we're going to put on our garnishes. And this is a matter of preference, do what you like. But the general rule is a little bit of bean sprouts. Take some of the basil. I like lots and lots of Thai basil, so you can put that in there. Uh, some of that sawtooth or no guy. Just rough chop that up. Uh, some people feel this is indispensable for fun, especially in the south, but they don't actually use any of this in the north. And then we've got some of our rice paddy herbs, so just taking the leaves from here. Some people eat the whole thing, I just like the leaves. And you'll develop a preference for what you like in there. Uh, as I said, if you're going to go order it like this, that's pho thai bovine. So that's a, a rare steak with a beef ball. And then you have hoisin sauce. Again, to preference, just a little bit of hoisin in there, just to give it a little bit more body and some sweetness. And then you have uh, a little bit of your chili sauce, you can put a little bit of that in there, or a lot if you like it really hot. If you want a couple layers of onion flavor, so you've got some of the cooked onion, and then some of the fresh onion to go on top. And then, just to round out the flavors, again, optional, maybe you don't like it, a little bit of lime or lemon. Uh, juice for some acidity to balance it out, and away you go. You can just leave that in there if you like the flavor. And that's it. You only need a set of chopsticks. And then just mix it up, and uh, you'll see some of it is still pretty rare. Uh, but like I said, even when it's pink like that, it is nice to eat. So go ahead and dig in and uh, enjoy.